Hey, how's it going? And welcome back to Consuming Cinema, a show about making and pairing food and drinks from popular movies and TV shows. Today we're making a Polynesian Pearl Diver with White Cake from Django Unchained. Let's get started. If you haven't seen Django Unchained, it's a 2012 film set in the antebellum South, written and directed by Quentin Tarantino, about a former slave named Django, who at the beginning of the story is bought and instantly freed by an ex-dentist and current bounty hunter named Dr. King Schultz. Schultz enlists Django to be his partner in bounty hunting, in order to track down and kill three evil slavers that Django knows, called the Brittle Brothers. And in return, Schultz agrees to help Django rescue his wife Broomhilda from the clutches of a diabolical slave owner named Calvin Candy, a man with both a serious sweet tooth and some seriously terrible teeth. Get it? It's all about a dentist trying to stop Candy. When Django and Schultz first go to meet and deceive Candy, Candy offers them a drink from the bar, and he himself orders, A Polynesian pearl diver do not spare the rum. This is an intentional anachronistic affectation on Tarantino's part, as the pearl diver, or pearl diver's punch, wasn't invented until the 1930s by pioneer of tiki drinks, Don the Beachcomber. Later, when they go to Candy's plantation to save Broomhilda, they sit down for a dinner that doesn't exactly go according to plan, but luckily, afterwards, they are able to negotiate Broomhilda's freedom, and Candy serves them a vanilla cake, or as he calls it, white cake. But before we get started on our white cake, we need to start by making a cinnamon syrup for our pearl diver, for which we'll need a small saucepan, into which we'll put a cup of sugar, as well as five cinnamon sticks that you will break in half and add to the sugar, in addition to one cup of water. Then, bring this mixture to a boil and let simmer for five minutes, before we strain and funnel the mixture into a bottle and refrigerate until it's ready for use. Next, we're going to make a vanilla syrup using the very same method. So to our saucepan, we'll add a cup of sugar, as well as a cup of water, and one full tablespoon of vanilla extract. Now repeat the same process of bringing to a boil and letting simmer for five minutes. Now we'll funnel this syrup into a bottle as well and refrigerate it to let it cool. Now we're gonna make one of Don Beach's secret blends, Gardenia Mix, which is the central ingredient to a pearl diver. The Gardenia Mix starts with a half a stick or two ounces of unsalted and softened butter, along with two ounces of honey. The runnier the honey, the better as well as two teaspoons of cinnamon syrup, and one teaspoon of vanilla syrup, and one teaspoon of allspice or pimento dram, which is an allspice liqueur. Now mix everything together, and once it's all incorporated, cover this mix and let it sit out at room temperature, or you can refrigerate it and make sure it's at room temperature when you're ready to make your cocktail. Now it's time to start our white cake. You had my curiosity, but now you have my attention. But before we begin, I want to say that this recipe was inspired by a cake made by Liz over at the Sugar Geek Show. So I'll put a link to her video up here, as well as a link to her channel in the video description below if you want to see how a real baking expert makes a similar and far prettier cake than I do. We'll first begin by mixing together our dry ingredients, which starts with 14 ounces or 3 cups of cake flour, as well as 1 tablespoon of baking powder mixed with 1 half teaspoon of baking soda and 13 ounces or one and three quarter cups of sugar, as well as one teaspoon of salt. Now blend these ingredients together with a stand or hand mixer on low speed until they are all evenly incorporated. Now we're gonna start adding a stick of softened unsalted butter in small chunks at a time. So one by one, add each tab of butter one at a time while simultaneously mixing at low speed until your mix reaches the texture of a grainy sand. Now, set aside while we prep our wet ingredients, which include five egg whites. If you don't know how to separate an egg white, simply crack the bottom of an egg on a flat surface and then use the egg shell to toss the yolk back and forth while letting the white fall into the bowl until you have all five of your egg whites separated. You'll also need four ounces of vegetable oil, as well as 10 ounces of buttermilk divided into two, and two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Add half the buttermilk to your vegetable oil and whisk together until mixed. Then add that mixture to our dry ingredients. Mix together with the mixer starting at low speed, gradually increasing the mixer speed until everything is properly blended. You're going to want to mix this for two full minutes so it's nicely incorporated. Now we're going to add the second half of our buttermilk to the egg whites, in addition to the vanilla extract. Now whisk it all together before adding it to the batter mixture. 
Then, just as we did before, mix the batter together with the mixer starting at low speed, gradually increasing the speed until everything is seamlessly mixed. I will note that these proportions are for a two-layered cake, but since I could only fit one batch in a bowl at a time, I will be doubling this batter mixture for the three-layer cake I'll be making. Now we're going to fill our cake pans, but before we do, we're going to give each a spray with some Pam. I'm using the kind that's mixed with flour, which is more conducive to baking. And once all three pans are greased and ready to go, it's time to fill these cake pans. You want to try and fill each of the three cake pans as evenly as possible. And while not entirely necessary, you can even weigh your cake pans out using a scale like I did to make sure they have precisely the same amount of batter. Now we'll put our cakes into a 335 degree oven for 35 to 40 minutes or until the cakes are cooked through. And when your cakes are out of the oven, they should be a beautiful golden brown. Test the cake's doneness by sticking a skewer through it. If the skewer comes out clean, then the cake is cooked through. Now gently tap the pan against the table to loosen it up. Then, using your cake spatula, gently work it against the edges of the cake pan to further loosen the cake from the pan. Then, transfer your cake onto a plate or a cutting board where we're going to level out the tops. Start by cutting an even crease under one of the lips of the cake with a bread knife. Then, with a cake leveler, cut the cake nice and slow so that we trim it as close to perfectly flat as possible. Then, you can remove the tops of the cake and have yourself a little snack. Now set these in the fridge to cool down while we work on our buttercream. Our buttercream starts in a large bowl to which we'll add a full stick of butter. Whip the butter in your mixer until it looks something like this. Now we are going to slowly add an entire box of confectioner's sugar. It may seem like a lot because it is. Little by little mix the sugar into the butter. This recipe is for one batch and I guarantee you you will need at least four batches of this. Once it has reached the texture of a thick grainy sand, we are going to add one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Then we are going to add four to five tablespoons of buttermilk, one at a time. So add one tablespoon and mix with your mixer. Then gradually add the other three tablespoons of buttermilk until you reach that perfect frosting consistency. You don't want the buttercream too liquidy as you want it to be able to stick nicely to the cake but still be spreadable. Now we're going to line the cake stand that we want to serve our cake on with four sheets of parchment paper in the shape of a square so that we'll be able to easily remove them later after frosting. If you have a cake turntable, I recommend using that to frost a cake as it'll make your life way easier than I made mine. Then you're going to want to add a little dab of frosting to the center of the cake stand which will act as a little bit of a glue to hold the cake to the stand. Now set down your first cake layer and press down gently to stick it to the frosting. Then scoop a few large dollops of frosting onto the cake and use a cake spatula to spread the buttercream all over the top, trying to do so as evenly as possible. Repeat the same process with your second layer and your third layer if you're making a three-layered cake like mine. And once you have your first buttercream layer on the tops as even as you'd like, we will now go ahead and frost the sides of the cake, and in order to do so, we are going to use a piping bag filled with some of our buttercream. Pipe along the sides of the cake in an up and down motion, and then use the cake spatula to evenly frost the sides. This first layer of frosting is called the crumb coat, so we are not looking for everything to be perfect with this base layer. We just want the cake to be entirely covered. And once your crumb coat is finished, Refrigerate for 20 minutes or so to let the crumb coat set. And once your crumb coat has set, it's time to finish frosting your cake. So with that piping bag again, we are going to make a spiral-like pattern of frosting all over the top layer. Then flatten that out a bit with the spatula before using a bench scraper to seamlessly flatten out the top of the cake like so. This is again a time where I am deeply regretting not purchasing a cake turntable. And once the top layer of frosting is nice and flat, it is time to frost the sides. So just as we did before, make an up and down pattern on the sides with a piping bag. Then as we did with the top, use the bench scraper to flatten out the sides of the cake. Now I'm just going to touch up the corners and edges with the cake spatula to make sure that everything is nice and seamless and even. And before you know it, your cake is very nearly done. So gently remove each sheet of parchment, trying your best to keep the cake as centered on the stand as possible. And once again, flatten out the top and the edges a little bit more, making sure everything is seamless. Now it's time to set the cake aside and allow the frosting to set, because we still have to make one very important thing. You do not have anything to drink. Can I get you a tasty refreshment? For our pearl diver, we'll need a blender as well as a couple cups of crushed ice, which I like to make using a Lewis bag and a mallet. We are also going to need not one, not two, but three different types of rums. The first of which is one and a half ounces of a Puerto Rican rum. Now a typical pearl diver calls for a Jamaican rum, 
but because the only rum I have that's even partially Jamaican is Plantation 3 Star, I'm using that. So we're going to add a 3 quarters of an ounce of that to our blender. Next, you're going to need half an ounce of Demerara rum. The only kind I have is this overproofed kind, but you know, Leo said don't spare the rum, so I won't. Now you're going to need a full ounce of preferably freshly squeezed orange juice, as well as 3 quarters of an ounce of lime juice and three quarters of an ounce of our gardenia mix. And finally, just one bar spoon of Velvet Falernum, which is something you can make, but I'm using this John D. Taylor brand that's pretty easy to track down. Now we're gonna blend this drink for about 15 seconds without ice. This is an important step as it allows the butter in the gardenia mix to emulsify. If you skip this step, you'll notice your butter might re-harden and will get cold too quickly. And after you blend for 15 seconds, your cocktail will look something like this. And now add a quarter cup of ice and blend for 15 more seconds. I'll be serving this drink in one of these cool coconut cups that I found on eBay. And then we will pour our cocktail inside of the glass. Then fill your cup with as much more crushed ice as you want and garnish with an edible flower. Now it is time to cut the cake. With a clean knife, cut a long slice where you want your piece. After cleaning the knife again, Cut another slice trying to be a lot more precise than I was. Keeping the knife inside the cake to stabilize it, use a pie server to remove the slice and plate it. And after cleaning it up a bit, your Polynesian Pearl Diver with white cake is finally complete. All that's left to do is to taste it. You know, I'll say up front that I'm not really a cake guy, but I gotta tell you, this is genuinely one of the best cakes that I've ever had, much less made. All credit goes to the Sugar Geek Show that inspired this recipe. But how does this cake pair with a Pearl Diver? Well, both the Pearl Diver and the cake are both complex and luxurious, and both are made with lots of butter, so naturally they pair together quite well. It's hard not to appreciate the pure decadence of both of these creations. So I'm giving this pairing two thumbs up. If you like the channel, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. If you have any suggestions for future videos, please leave them in the comments below. All recipes, including the one from the Sugar Geek Show, will be included in a link in the video description. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Consuming Cinema. And don't forget to join us next week when we make a pairing from The Godfather. Thank you for watching.